Hello, I am Venkat and this is part 1 of ASP.NET Core Blazor tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss what is Blazor and why should we use it, set up our local machine for Blazor application development by installing the tools and softwares required. Before we discuss what is Blazor and why should we use it, let's take a step back and understand how we develop web applications today. For server-side development, we use programming languages like c -sharp, Java, PHP, etc. These are the server-side programming languages. For the client-side development, we use JavaScript frameworks like Angular, React, Vue, etc. There's no doubt these JavaScript frameworks dominated client-side development up until recently. To stay in the business as a developer and remain competitive, it's inevitable we learn both a server-side programming language and a client-side programming language. But the question is, why should we learn and use two different sets of programming languages and frameworks? Can't we use c -sharp for both server-side and client-side development? Well, we can and that's exactly why we should use Blazor. With Blazor, we can now build interactive web UIs using c -sharp instead of JavaScript. c -sharp code can be executed both on the server and in the client browser. This means existing .NET developers can reuse their c -sharp skills rather than learning new JavaScript frameworks and worrying about their huge learning curve. At this point, you might be thinking browsers understand and execute only JavaScript. How can we execute c -sharp code in the client browser? Well, the answer is WebAssembly. Blazor can run c -sharp code directly in the browser using WebAssembly. It runs in the same security sandbox just like any other JavaScript framework like Angular, React, Vue, etc. Not just c -sharp. In fact, we can run any type of code in the browser using WebAssembly. WebAssembly is based on open web standards, so it is native part of all modern browsers, including mobile browsers. This means for the Blazor application to work, there is no need to install any special plugin like back in the days of Silverlight and Flash. Blazor offers two hosting models, Blazor WebAssembly and Blazor Server. Blazor WebAssembly this is also called the client-side hosting model and in this model, the application runs directly in the browser on WebAssembly. So everything the application needs, that is the compiled application code itself, its dependencies and the .NET runtime are downloaded to the browser. We use the Blazor WebAssembly app template to create a Blazor application with this client-side hosting model. We'll see this in action in our upcoming videos. Blazor Server. This is also called the server hosting model and in this model, the application is executed on the server from within an ASP.NET Core application. Between the client and the server, a SignalR connection is established. When an event occurs on the client, such as a button click for example, the information about the event is sent to the server over the SignalR connection. The server handles the event and for the generated HTML, a diff that is, a difference is calculated. The entire HTML is not sent back again to the client. It's only the diff that is sent to the client over the established SignalR connection. The browser then updates the UI. Blazor in general embraces the single page application architecture, which rewrites the same page dynamically in response to the user action. Since only the diff is applied to update the UI, the application feels faster and more responsive to the user. We use the Blazor server app template to create a Blazor application with this server hosting model. We'll create a Blazor application with both the hosting models and discuss the pros and cons in detail in our upcoming videos. To set up our local machine for Blazor development, there are two things that we need to install. As of this recording, the latest .NET Core version is 3.1. So install the .NET Core SDK 3.1 or later from this URL. To verify the version of .NET Core SDK installed on your machine, launch command prompt by typing cmd in the run vendor and here use the command .NET. As you can see, we can use several options with this command. For example, h for help. 
In our case, we want to display the list of installed .NET Core software development kits. So let's use .NET dash dash list dash SDKs. On my machine, as you can see, I have four .NET Core SDKs installed 2.1, 2.2, 3.0 and 3.1. Next, we need an IDE. We can develop Blazor applications using Visual Studio 2019, Visual Studio Code or the .NET Core CLI. If you're using Visual Studio, even the free Community Edition works just fine. To download and install Visual Studio, visit this URL, visualstudio.microsoft.com slash downloads. If you're using Visual Studio, make sure ASP.NET and Web Development Workload is installed. To verify, if you have this workload installed, go to Visual Studio, click on Tools, and then Get Tools and Features. To follow along and get the most out of this course, you need to have basic knowledge of c -sharp, HTML and CSS. Blazor is an excellent framework and it's gaining great traction recently. It is here to stay. So if you're a .NET developer, it's invaluable to have Blazor in your tool belt. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening. Thank you.